CLT sealed for good this week. We are talking about CLT cross laminated timber. Thank you again for joining me. These are one of those episodes where we're going to touch on the new fresh stuff that's happening out in the building market in the country. Cross laminated timber. For those of you that haven't come across it, stay tuned and pay attention because this is going to be a technology we're going to see more of. It's a trend that's come out of Europe. There are some uh, local builders in the country, particularly in the Eastern Seaboard, that are I won't say plain, they are seriously constructing some big buildings with CLT now, cross laminated timber. And it's something that we're going to see more and more of for various reasons. What is cross laminated timber? Cross laminated timber is a high strength timber laminate, basically the way it's, it's processed in the factory. It has layers of timber in different sections, I'm not going to go into the technology behind the manufacturing piece, but the big advantage of it is for a number of reasons. It has environmental benefits, it has insulative benefits, it's cost cutting in terms of time to install is a huge one. Um, the carbon friendly nature of it is making it very, very popular with specifiers and engineers and architects particularly. Um, there are acoustic benefits to it. Speed of application is always one, but the fact is the quality of it and sustainability because as you know, con concrete now is seen cement uh, and concrete are deemed as environmental, potential environmental hazards in terms of the way they are constructed. And not that uh, I know a lot of my friends out in the Concrete Institute are going to probably uh, be annoyed that I've, I've uh, made that comment, but the reality is there are many environmental uh, specifiers globally now that are looking for alternatives to things like concrete. And also cross laminated timber doesn't crack there's a, there's, a, there's a debate about its structural stability over things like concrete substrates. So, where does this all fit in with waterproofing? Um, these are one of the things that I think, I have mentioned last year in, in, a, in a previous episodes about when new technologies come out, new services, how you follow them. I have seen some of the data at the moment on specifications from CLT providers and they talk about using approved waterproofing it doesn't give waterproofers or tiling trades enough information on what to do. So this space is going to change a little bit further. There's going to be CLT uh, manufacturers and suppliers that are going to have to get into more detail in terms of what the specs are when you are waterproofing directly over their substrates. So I've seen it used in two ways. I've seen things like plasterboard or linings go to the face of CLT walls and wet areas. And so you're just waterproofing over a standard wet area substrate. That's an easy one. But I've also seen where the substrate is the CLT and Gripset was involved, has been involved with a few builders around the country that have asked their opinion on how we would waterproof and approach CLT structures. And in that situation, you need to understand the way CLT works compared to things like traditional timbers that have been used in wet areas like plywood, wet area plywood or wet area particle board flooring which are, sometimes can be a little bit alarming for membrane um, installers for the fact of the way those types of timbers behave. Now CLT is far different than your 22, 24 mil say particle board flooring or uh, plywood because they are substrates that are fixed onto timber joists or building joists. CLT is the actual alternative to the structure. So think of a concrete slab, CLT will take the place it's big and modular um, and it is, it's pieced together but the strength of it is incredible. And on the surface, our system is at the moment, from all the CLT grades that we've seen out there, that we use our grips at OP Primer on CLT. If we're going directly on CLT, that is the primer we use. If the CLT has been cladded with another wet area substrate, then it's a simple one. If it's Villa Board or Jib Rock, it, we would go with our GP Primer and then our normal waterproof system. Nothing changes in the way that we would waterproof those substrates. So CLT, you'll see those images now coming on screen. You can see the way the wall floor design is in place. Even though it looks like it's um, in situ concrete in many ways, the way that the CLT works, it still requires things like a bond breaker. So we still use our elastoproof joint band at the wall floor junction as the bond breaker. We would still use one of our wet area membrane systems, whether it be our liquids like the 38FC, or we'd use our GC system for it if needed. The thing that you need to be aware of 
that is a, that is Gripset's position as a manufacturer. If you're tiling directly to it, you need to understand if it's a substrate that's not um, that requires waterproofing, what the requirements are for CLT for direct tiling over. Our position on that would be to still, at this point in time, uh, if you don't get any knowledge or information and specification from the suppliers of CLT, we would still go with something like our insulative uh, GC1 membrane that can be used as an anti-fracture system and as a tile underlay before you go and lay tiles directly over it, just to ensure that you've got a substrate that's going to handle those tiles uh, without any debonding from the substrate. It is still early days. That is the only thing I see in the industry at the moment with CLT. The knowledge is very, very um, directed towards the structural elements and the structural benefits, the sustainability, the eco uh, benefits of CLT in construction. But there's not enough discussion around how to fix membranes, tiles, surface finishes to it from what I've seen out there. Any of those CLT players that we've uh, come across and been dealing with have got different information on that. That needs to be brought to the attention of companies like ourselves and some of our competitive brands so we can write specifications around that and the applicators, whether it be waterproofers, tilers, um, any other trade that might be putting a finish on top of CLT understands exactly what the parameters are, the limitations and the recommendations to get it right. I mentioned at the start, CLT is here to stay. It is a technology that's going to only be seen more and more in Australia. In an environment like we have, it is a substrate that I believe is going to bring the cost of building down for certain uh, situations. It's, it's going to be a, a choice of substrate for construction for the fact of all the benefits offers. So we need to make sure that we get it right and all the trades are working together. And from our point of view, let's make sure the waterproofing piece and CLT work hand in hand together to give us a successful outcome. Anybody that's got any information, photos, details, or want to debate me on the benefits of CLT and waterproofing on how you go about it, I'm always up for the chat, and so is our technical department. If you need a specification on going over CLT, please contact us. We've got a number of specs and details on how to handle CLT and put the grip systems over it. So until next time, I'll see you, and I'm looking forward to the further discussion on this. Ciao.